Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Kashyap Kurzada and this is a brief talk on the topic of diverticulitis. This is presented for the University of Toronto PA program at the Faculty of Medicine. This lecture is released under the CC by SA license. You are authorized to distribute this and modify it as long as original and subsequent authors are credited. So let's begin with a description of diverticulosis. Now these are out pockets of colonic mucosa and submucosa through the weak muscle points in the colonic wall. This is largely age dependent, 5% uh, are present at age 40, 30% at age 60, 65% at age 85. It's often asymptomatic and an incidental finding on endoscopy, and some patients will have cramping, bloating, flatulence but this could be related to other causes such as IBS. There is a theory that a western low fiber diet could be to blame for this uh, and should be aware of that. Complications of diverticulosis there's two main ones that you should be aware of. There's diverticulitis and diverticular bleeding. Diverticulitis itself results from a micro perforation of a diverticulum. Um, this results from the increase in the intraluminal pressure within the diverticulum which leads to focal necrosis and a perforation. Perforation can be walled off by local fat and mesentery which leads to a localized abscess and localized pain. A poorly contained perforation will result, result in diffuse peritonitis. You will have a sort of uh, bowel contents and fluid spreading throughout the abdomen causing inflammation and peritonitis. 25% of our diverticulitis cases are complicated diverticulitis. This is defined as the formation of a fistula, abscess, peritonitis, obstruction, or perforation. Symptoms? 70% of patients will have left lower quadrant pain. There's also nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, Urinary symptoms, right-sided symptoms are predominant in East Asian populations, up to 70% of those cases, and patients will often have a low-grade fever. Tests, you could have a rise in the white blood cell count, but not always. You should always order liver function tests, amylase, urinalysis, but these are usually negative. Your urinalysis can sometimes show a sterile pyuria, but this is usually caused by inflammation adjacent to the ureter. Plain films are useful only to exclude other causes of pain, such as a bowel obstruction or um, a perforation with free air. A CT scan is the treatment uh, is the uh, imaging modality of choice. It has a negative predictive value nearing 100% uh, with IV or oral contrast. Some uh, radiologists can read a CT scan without the IV contrast, just with oral contrast. An ultrasound is 85 to 98 percent sensitive and is not the preferred method for diagnosing this. Treatment of complicated diverticulitis, surgery is almost always required. This again was diverticulitis that's complicated by perforation, abscess, uh, or fistula formation. Uncomplicated diverticulitis can be treated with medical management Often this can be done as an outpatient. Um, if the patient is able to tolerate oral intake, is the pain well controlled, is the patient reliable enough to follow up? Uh, you should put your patients on a clear liquid diet. Remember again that we're dealing with a micro perforation of the bowel and the liquid diet will help prevent this from being getting worse. And antibiotics. Um, your usual antibiotics of choice would be a fluoroquinolone plus metronidazole, but you can also replace an allergic patient with um, amoxicillin clavulinate or uh, trimethoprin sulfamethoxazole. Um, usually treatment is for 10 to 14 days. Inpatient treatment is indicated for some cases of uncomplicated and all cases of complicated diverticulitis. And in complicated cases you would keep the patient NPO, put them on broad spectrum antibiotics, your shotgun kitchen sink approach with ampicillin, gentamicin, flagell, or IV piptazo and then surgery. Uncomplicated you would treat with fluids, um, IV fluids, broad spectrum antibiotics, 
And these regimens you should know, um, just uh, in case you had to deal with this on the floor. You should also know the treatment for complicated diverticulitis. Now, prognosis, one-third of patients may have repeated attacks of diverticulitis. These are usually uncomplicated. Medical therapy is usually adequate if it was adequate the first time. And surgery may be considered for repeated attacks, but this is evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis and generally would be for younger patients. Now, briefly on diverticular bleeding. As your diverticulum herniates from the colonic wall, this can disrupt the blood vessel supplies that supplies that particular bowel segment, and this can then rupture into the bowel lumen. Bleeding is usually painless, usually there's no abdominal pain, and your physical exam is usually normal. This patient should ultimately have a scope, it should be investigated, and should be observed until the, pain, the bleeding settles down. Thank you very much.